Do you guys think that there is such a thing as too smart for TV? Starting off with the... That's yeah. good. Wow. We, we did work up to that. We can't ask if you wear pants on set. That's a really good question. I actually don't. Like I don't think so. I really don't. I think that I think that the audience is absolutely... Uh, you know, I, I've always said never underestimate the, an audience. Um, and I think if it's good, you know, people will watch it. I think Too Smart for TV tends to get, you know, slapped on things that people liked and failed. Right. So it becomes the reason. But, um, you know, The West Wing was a huge success. It was an extraordinarily smart, well-written, you know, uh, a bunch of policy wonk stuff. I mean, so the fact that that uh, lasted as long as it did, I think, sort of belies the notion that... Um, there are a lot of reasons, and you can throw Too Smart for TV in there, but I don't think anybody goes down just for being an intelligent show. So for a show that didn't last that long, since we're starting off swinging, mm -hmm. <laughs> there are similarities to Lone Star, which I love. I uh -huh. love this one as well. But does it worry you at all that people have a hard time kind of separating between two lives? or? Um, you mean the characters or the, the shows? The concept. Um, no, I guess it doesn't worry me since I finished one and just uh, and just went right into this one. It's something actually I'm I'm really intrigued by, and I think that a lot of the a lot of the things that people ultimately felt like were a reason that uh, Lone Star may not have hit the huge audience on network were things that. Um, ultimately, Awake tries to answer or address. You know, he's not a morally ambiguous character who can't decide between two wives. He's a guy who's really struggling to hold on to his wife and his son, which I think is something that we can empathize with. And instead of a, a purely soap serial engine, which I think a lot of people question the sustainability of with Lone Star, although I, I maintain it, we would, have, we would have made it work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this does have that, that uh, in addition to the serialized nature of the storytelling, there is a, there is a case of the week element that, um, that, that you can tune in and, uh, and get, even if episode eight is the first one that you see. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels layered that you're dividing these two worlds, the warm colors, the cool colors, the bands, all of that. But it, all of that sort of also makes it seem like both are fake. But the more you all are talking, that third timeline where he's dead and they're both, you know, neither, everyone died, whatever, in this accident. And it's just his, you're kind of making me think that that's not even an option. I personally tend not to be interested in it was all a dream stories. I mean, even if it takes you seven seasons to get to it was all a dream. Like, I, I just, it's... If you want me to invest in the idea, just do what you promised. You told me in the first week that one of these was real and one of these wasn't and that you could not tell the difference. I, I understand that there's a value to like a twist on a twist, but I also feel like there's a value to seeing that through to the end and finding out emotionally what it would mean to literally discover that there wasn't a way out of the box, that the rules are exactly as they were laid out in the beginning.